Um, so it it takes a while, I think, to get used to the picture in and of itself. But this is 12 units long and not changing because that's the actual bar. Um, the height of the building is 12, but um, this is what's being pulled in, and so this is eventually going to kind of come up to the building and, and lie flat against the building. So I'm trying to think what I want to show and what I want to get rid of. So here's my picture. Don't worry about any of that. Um, so at the moment, they're telling us that this Y is 6. Yes? And if that Y is 6, I actually drew a an altitude so that I had two different right triangles. And that's where the trick was here because it, be, it becomes two different equations, one for a Pythagorean theorem here and one for a Pythagorean theorem here. So this is your x-coordinate, and obviously as this gets pulled up, that x-coordinate should be shrinking. Um, but right now when this is 6, this is 6 root 3. This is changing. Obviously as this post moves upward, this is lengthening, right? And when this one lengthens, this one's shortening. But right now, the height of the building is 12. So whatever the y-coordinate is, this has to be 12 minus that y-coordinate because this is the top of the building. So I have a length of, of x, y, and 12. This dx dt is moving. This dy dt is moving as well. Um, on this one, we have... Again, 6 root 3 at the moment. This is changing, and this is also changing, and they told us the rate at which this was being pulled in. Um, so again, when, at the moment this is 6, this 12 minus 6 is also 6. And so 6, 6 root 3, this is also 12 at the moment. Although this 12 is changing, that 12 is not. Okay. So what I did was I made two Pythagorean theorems. One for uh, this triangle. So there's my x squared plus 12 minus y squared equals s squared. And I have no constants that I can plug into this one because all three legs here are changing. On this triangle, I did x squared plus y squared equals 12 squared. And I actually did plug in my 12 there because that is not changing. It has a, a rate of change of 0. So I just took these two equations and I differentiated both of them. So this 2x uh, dx dt, this one was a little chain rule. So I brought the 2 out in front of the 12 minus y times the derivative of what's inside, negative 1. So I threw a negative out in front. dy dt equals 2s ds dt. On this one, 2x dx dt, 2y dy dt, and then the derivative of 144 is just 0. So it's just a little system of equations, and at the moment, I know x values, I know y values, and I know s and ds dt. I know x values and I know y values. So in both equations, I'm going to have an unknown dx dt and an unknown dy dt, but everything else I know. So I plug all that in. Now, I did a lot here in one step. Since I knew y is 6 at the moment, I just did 12 minus 6 is 6 times the negative 2 and made it negative 12 dy dt. Um, but everything else is just throwing your, your current numbers in there and simplifying. So this one simplified down to here with dx's and dy dt's. Same thing here. And then I just did a system of equations, elimination. I lined them up, so I took this one lined it up underneath this one. I did opposite signs on the 12 dy dt's. So I added and I got 24 root 3 dx dt's. These eliminated equaled negative 4.8. I divided both sides by 24 root 3. I needed to do a little mental math here because one of these was a decimal divided by 24 root 3. So I moved this decimal over one to make it negative 48. And so to counter that, I had to move that decimal over one. Technically, I multiplied the numerator and the denominator both by 10 to get rid of that. And then I simplified. So dx dt equaled this, and then I rationalized. And then once you know dx dt, I just went back up into here, 
and plugged it in. So 12 root 3, and then I replaced the DXDT. I actually replaced it with this version of DXDT so that my root 3s would cancel. And then solve for DYDT. So I don't think it's terribly difficult to follow. Coming up with that on your own would be difficult because, Maria, was it you that I ran into? And you were like, I don't even know what triangle to use. Yeah. That's because there were, and it took me a few minutes to think about it. And so anytime that happens, I decide that's like a bonus type question. But anyway, two right triangles, that was the answer to that question. And then you just do a system. So 19, I, well, that's when I omitted. No, no. Okay. I, I just was starting that. So I'll, I'll try to, so far this is what I have because I just was doing it as you guys were coming in. I kind of split up the pool into a rectangular prism and a triangular prism because of that deep end shallow end. It really is two different shapes. It's a triangular prism and then this rectangular prism is sitting on, like, on top of that. Um, and so I, I'm going to... I'm going to play with that right now. Um, but other questions on your homework other than 23? Maria? 25B is really not even a related rates question. Um, this guy that's 300 miles away and traveling at 600 miles per hour, it'll take him a half an hour to get to that point, right? If you're going, 300, if you're going 600 miles per hour, and you're 300 miles away. Does that make sense? It'll just take a half hour. This guy, same thing. He's 250 miles away, but he's traveling at 450, so it'll also take him a half an hour. So essentially, this guy has a half hour before these two planes would collide. Anything else? Okay. Okay. Go ahead and pass that forward. Um, let's do this. I wrote down all the formulas you that we've had to derive so far. All of them. So well. First of all, let's not go that far. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm pretty sure you already know. Area equals one half base times height for a triangle. I hope you already know. Any SOHCAHTOA formula, if you're looking for the rate of change of an angle. Um, your cylinder volume. Volume equals area of the base times the height. Your cone is the area of the base, pi r squared times the height, but one third because that's getting... Um, skinnier as you move forward, unlike the cylinders, obviously, a uniform width the whole way. Um, circles, area and circumference, again, hopefully you already know those. Cubes, hopefully you already know or else you can think through those. The volume and the surface area of a cube. And then a sphere. 4 thirds pi r cubed for the volume, and the surface area is 4 pi r squared. If you notice that with the sphere, the surface area is just the derivative of the volume. Kind of a, a coincidence there, but it could help you memorize it. If you just know one of them, know the volume, you can derive it to get the surface area. So those are to be memorized. Those are the ones we use most frequently. Um, I have your implicit quizzes that I will give back. Obviously, there's no word problems involved there. Um, and then we're just going to look at the review sheet. Where's the finish for homework? It's for homework. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing I will say on the review sheet is that we will omit <coughs> number the last one, 12, uh, because it requires a law of sines, law of cosines equation that I don't think you guys have ever learned. Okay, so don't, don't worry about that. Um, 
So why don't you go ahead and get started on that? Get a separate sheet of paper out, and then if any, you know, as questions come up, you can ask on it, um, and I will work on that swimming pool one. And let you know when I'm done. 